The third set of college football playoff rankings have been released, and here's a look at the projected bracket. A reminder, the top five conference champions earn automatic bids with the four highest-ranked teams receiving a first-round bye. So Boise State is ranked 12th, BYU is ranked 14th, but in the bracket, again, the four highest-ranked teams receive a first-round bye. That's how this works. 11 games to be played, culminating with the national championship in Atlanta. From the top to the bottom here on the projected playoff bracket is BYU going to Columbus to take on Ohio State. Alabama, Notre Dame. We saw that a couple years ago. That didn't go real well for, uh, for Notre Dame. Uh, Georgia and Penn State. That'd be a fun matchup. And Ole Miss and Indiana in Bloomington. A first-round matchup there for the Hoosiers and Rebels. All right, back here with CBS Sports College football writer Richard Johnson. Let's welcome in 24-7 Sports College football analyst Brad Crawford. And Richard, I'll go your way first. Your initial takeaway is what? from the rankings. My initial takeaway is further down than a lot of people are going to be paying attention to because a lot of people are going to be paying attention to the top 12, top 15. I understand why. But Missouri sitting there at 23 is beyond the pale to me. This is a team that got beat by a combined 60 points over 60 points by Texas A&M and Alabama and then they lost to South Carolina on Saturday. It matters because Missouri is propping up the college football players playoff cases of Alabama and Texas A&M in edgewise ways because Missouri counts as a ranked victory for those two teams and ranked victories are something that the committee has in their stated criteria on the website something that they put a lot of importance in. I cannot understand why week after week after week this Missouri team remains in the top 25. That's it's a big bone for you to pick here. It is you, man. you keep harping on this. It is Hakeem. I bring up every <laughs> single week because it matters when we start to try to parse these teams at the end because the way we're going to be parsing these teams that are sitting in the 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 range it's going to be parsing them because of some of these edgewise cases, like a win over Missouri that is boosting a resume that shouldn't be. With all due respect, Brad, that's not my initial takeaway. <laughs> okay, and, and I like Richard, but that's not my. I don't care about Missouri right now, and, and I love Tiger fans, and I love Missouri. It's a great state, and it's a great program. Shouts to Eli Drinkwitz. But my biggest takeaway here is we've got five SEC teams in the top 11. Pretty impressive, right? I mean, Tennessee might be on the outside looking in, but right now the Vols look decent if they went out and finished 10 and 2. I'm most surprised that Ole Miss right now moved up to what, number nine? That, that's really impressive. Yep. The Rebels had a open date and, and now they're ninth. So, yeah, a tough game out Florida this weekend. Ole Miss right now, though, with Lane Kiffin sitting pretty good in that nine spot. I do think we're going to see some fluctuation after this week. So, Five SEC teams in the top 11. I want to stay right here because Brad and I talked about this on Saturday after week 12 was final. Brad, we have a situation here where those five teams are in the playoff when all is said and done because perhaps the committee thinks a two-loss SEC team is better than a one-loss Indiana team if they were to lose to Ohio State. Or potentially Penn State if Indiana loses in overtime or some kind of crazy, you know, last second finish. We're going to have a situation, Akeem, where it is a 10 and 2, maybe Tennessee, 10 and 2 Georgia, 10 and 10 and 2 Ole Miss going up against an 11 and 1 Indiana or an 11 and 1 Penn State. And we're going to see a situation where you either have three Big Ten and five SECs or we have four and four. I think it's more likely we're going to have four and four. And there's going to be a 10 win SEC team sitting home. Man, these next couple weekends, and especially Commerce Championship weekend, are going to be pivotal over these next few polls. So how can you argue that then, Richard? Make the case against that. Against? Yeah, against five SEC teams in. Well, my thing is with, first and foremost, with Tennessee. I don't love what Tennessee has on the page right now. Beat Tennessee Alabama. Got a good win against Alabama. All right. You got a horrible loss against Arkansas. And you have they a could two, beat Vanderbilt. And you have a two They have Vanderbilt on the end of their Georgia. schedule. And if they beat Vanderbilt. Who, who, did, who did Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt beat? Vanderbilt beat Alabama. Sure, but if you. You can't beat, have Alabama in Tennessee you, out. Hakeem, if you beat 
Vanderbilt, then Vanderbilt's got what five losses, and Vanderbilt's not even doesn't even have a prayer to being ranked. So Common th opponents we're talking about. Vanderbilt doesn't. Vanderbilt does not get to boost your resume if Vanderbilt's sitting there at five losses, at six losses on the edge of bowl criteria. To me, that does not boost Tennessee's resume. So I look at that. Now, Indiana's got to take care of business on Saturday, all right? And by take care of business, I don't even mean necessarily win. Indiana has to be competitive in that game. If Ohio State covers a spread that is creeping towards two touchdowns, they cover that or exceed that, I think Indiana's going to have a problem because Indiana does not have anything else on their resume to fall back on outside of the Ohio State game that they play on Saturday, Hakeem. Indiana's strength of schedule is 106th in the country. They have nothing on that schedule. Nothing. So They beat Michigan. That's their best win. And they struggled to do it. Michigan punked them in the second half of that game. And the reason, or the fact that, uh, that uh, Michigan punked them in the second half of that game and made it very difficult on Indiana to win, quite frankly, is why I'm pretty worried about Indiana on Saturday against Ohio State. Indiana has to equip themselves well in that Ohio State game. Indiana has done the first thing that good teams do, which is beat bad teams. And they got a whole host of bad teams on that schedule. But the other thing that good teams do is they beat other good teams. So you have to play really well against this Ohio State team. Brad Do not, is, don't give him an excuse. Brad, to, to, to Richard's point, is, is there a score threshold? Like, do, does Indiana have to keep it within two touchdowns? Or, heck, if they win outright, then this conversation is moot. But my point is, does Indiana have to keep it within two touchdowns to have that argument really sink in? I mean, I think a 38-20 to 20 loss, even if the Hoosiers do not cover, and it's somewhat competitive, 11-1 is going to get Indiana in. This is a record-setting season. I think the committee is sort of taking that into consideration. Game control has been a positive for Indiana. They've blown out most opponents. I want to touch on one thing, too, the, the Tennessee-Bama situation. The reason right now the committee is not looking at Tennessee's win over Bama as sort of the outlier there is because the committee likes Bama more than Tennessee right now. And head-to-head -head only matters when everything else is equal. Well, the committee does not see those two teams equal right now, despite the Vols being the Crimson Tide. Alabama has that win over Georgia. They beat South Carolina. That's a quality win Tennessee does not have. And Tennessee has a bad loss at Arkansas. Another two-loss SEC team, Ole Miss, scored 63 points in Fayetteville. So Indiana Tennessee also right now, even though they're inside the top 12, ain't looking too good for the Vols. I'm sorry about that, Brad. Indiana also doesn't necessarily own that top five spot because we've seen what happens when you take a loss. The committee just punted for a week, punted Georgia out of their spot, and they were, what, two or three in the country when they went into Oxford and lost to Ole Miss. Correct. They were last week on the outside looking in. Now they're yep. back mm -hmm. because they beat Tennessee. But, again, this is not a hard and fast thing that they belong in this 12-team field if they lose against Ohio State. The committee has shown that they'll knock you out. They'll kick you well, out. Well, BYU was six last week. Yeah. They're all the way down to 14. They dropped eight spots. Yeah. So to me, that tells you that they don't believe in BYU. And we sat up here on this very desk and we said we didn't believe in BYU. And it's not because we don't like the program or we don't like the players. Or we don't like the head coach. We just don't believe them being a top tier team. Like I have a ton of respect for BYU. But I had people chattering and, 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 and all in the comments up and, up and down about how BYU wasn't getting enough respect. BYU had a chance to get more respect at home against Kansas. It did not. It did not. They got that win against rival Utah. They're down. That tells you right there to me, Brad, what the committee thinks of Indiana. When you talk about this conversation involving Indiana, they're still there. There's still five in the country. That's because the committee respects teams without a loss. Unblemished records mean everything to this committee. But once you lose a game, if you don't have a good resume, you get jacked outside of the top 10 quickly, man. And that's what we saw with BYU. We saw BYU in those first rankings, number nine, maybe underrated a bit. Then they moved to six. But now they've been properly rated outside of the top 12 after that loss, as you mentioned. So it's obvious, man, that the Big 12 is going to be a one-bid league. And we have mentioned that situation where the top, you know, five highest rated conference champions get auto bids. What if the Big 12 is not inside that top 15? Then they're in trouble. Because I, 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 but I don't, th I don't think that's going to be the case. Because right now, for, for, for the sake of this conversation, this exercise, BYU is in. 
They're the 12 seed. They're taking on Ohio State. So if you're sitting here, we can sit here and argue about how good BYU is or what that loss meant. If they take care of business against Arizona State and then Houston, they're going to be in. And if they can beat Colorado, they're in. Hakeem. But the problem lies in, can they beat Colorado? Can they beat ASU? That's a big question. Can they beat Houston? Yeah, sure. Why not? My thing is here, it's going to come down to that conference title game. If they both went out, saying Colorado and BYU, who do you got in that game? Because to me, you could go either way there, and that, te that, that team's getting in. The thing I think we also need to point out is what Brad just said. Unblemished records yes, matter. They do. A team that you haven't brought up sits in these college football playoff rankings. It is the Army Black Knights. If Army can remain undefeated, it would mean they've beaten Notre Dame. They Correct, Notre, and Notre Dame, Dame would be in out. a few days yep. in a Yankee Stadium. That would be a tremendous win for Army. So if it comes down to for that fifth automatic qualifier spot, Boise State who wins out, Army who wins out, and then the Big 12 champion, I am not so sure the Big 12 champion gets in. I don't even think I'd put them in in my field if I mm. were drawing the field. I think you give those I disagree spots with you there, but Army. I agree and respect that. I, I, I disagree. Because Army would also have beaten Tulane Agreed. in an AAC championship. But I, I think that when the day, when the, all is said and done, when there's selection Sunday, Brad, I think the Big 12 champion will be in the playoff field. I don't really think that there's a, I, I know there's a scenario, but based on what I have seen, based on what you have seen, I think that you're probably starting to, to believe that Colorado and BYU, those are two very good, qual those are quality teams. And if that, one of the, the, the team that wins the Big 12, I've, they got to put them in the field. You got to put them in the field. I, mean, I can't imagine the college football gods allowing, you know, Coach Prime to win a Big 12 championship his first season in the Big 12 and not get in on like a, you know, seven game winning streak entering the playoff. I do like what Richard said, though. And we saw tonight, Tulane is up five spots. Yep. We didn't think they jumped five spots after shutting out Navy, but here they are. So that's going to be two quality wins for our Army if they're able to Yankee Stadium beat Notre Dame and then beat Tulane in the AAC championship game. So, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't think it's a shoe in that Colorado BYU winner is going to be in. But if it is Colorado and BYU, say, loses to Arizona State and still somehow backs its way in. I'm, I don't know, man. I'm, you can't there, leave the Big no 12 champion out. There's no guarantee right now. You can't leave the Big 12 champion out. Why not? Because you can't. Not when there's 12 teams in a playoff. Why not? You, you can't. You don't, you don't have no, a blood. No, 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 no. You no. do not. I, no. Do I, not. I don't see the committee going, you know, we're going to leave the Big 12 out in our first year of the span of playoff. You do not this have is a, a This is an amazing right conference. To the college football Colorado's playoff. Colorado's resume won't be as good as Army. Colorado's I, resume the, will not be as good as Army. Army getting in, I'm fine with Army getting in. I'm, I'm rooting for Army. I hope Army has absolute chaos on Saturday at Yankee Stadium. But well, Boise's resume is better than Colorado. If you stack Boise up You're not wrong. Next to You're not, I won't disagree with you. They're going to leave them out. They're going to leave them I out. I just I can't see how a Big 12 champion would be left out. I just, just because you call it a Power 4 conference in name does not mean they have a blood right to get in this dance. It does not matter what your average resume with your tele, uh, your average payout with your TV deal is as far as how you stack up as a conference to get in this dance. Now, it would be a hell of a promo that Coach Prime would cut. Talk about it. We would have to have Coach Prime on because Coach Prime, I don't even know. He would burn the whole thing down. So you're telling me, them out of the so you, Brad, you're telling me that one year after Florida State doesn't get in, after going undefeated, that a former Florida State standout, Deion Sanders, wins the Big 12 and he's not in the playoff? Get out. I, I think I, it I can't, helps. I can't see that. I think it helps, too, that Travis Hunter is going to win the Heisman. There you see? You want to have the Heisman winner in this playoff, But what right? if it's BYU oh, that wins it? That. What, hold on. What, what if BYU wins the Big 12 title game? Are you are you keeping them out in your scenario? BYU wins out? Wins yes, the Big 12 wins title out. Game? Wins out. They win their final three games. That's that's when it gets dicey. If, okay. if, if BYU wins out, if BYU wins out, I think you're going to have a hard time parsing between, again, undefeated Because Kansas is playing like South Carolina is right now. Right. They're, so, they're, they're, they're upset-minded. They're playing the way we thought they were going to play at the beginning of the season. Remember what you'd have to parse. You would have to parse an undefeated Army that would have a resume that includes a win over Tulane and Notre Dame against Boise State and then against your Big 12 champion. It's – I don't know, man. We're not going to have an undefeated team – be left out of the playoff. We expanded this thing to get more unbeatens in. An unbeaten team is not getting left out. I agree with him. Yeah. I agree with him. I do. I, I, I agree with you guys. I, it, can you imagine, though, if Army beats Notre Dame? Can you, have, you, have you played that 
scenario out in your mind yet, Richard? Oh, it, it would have to be the perfect army day. I'm talking about six possessions <laughs> per side. The thing's already in Yankee Stadium. It's going to look like a game from 1940-whatever. So just make this the most retrograde, set the sport back 50 years, zero passes, and Army finds a way to get it done uh, in Yankee Stadium, just like the Four Horsemen did way back when. It would I, be something. I, look, I, I love Jeff Munkin's program, what he does with these young men, and look, they're a fun team to watch. Bryson Dale, I mean, he should be in the Heisman conversation. No, oh, no question. But Notre Dame, Brad, right now, if you ask me a couple teams you don't want to face right now, it's Notre Dame. The, the week in and week out, they are forcing multiple turnovers. Like, they're nasty Hard on defense. Team, they found well their group. Elite secondary, yeah. I mean, I think the game plan for Army should be just what Richard said. I mean, you have a you know 18 play, nine minute drive. Then maybe an onside kick, and Notre Dame doesn't get the ball for an entire quarter. You're trying to limit possessions. I think Monk is going to pull out all the stops, man. But I, I'm with you. Notre Dame as a first round home game team at 11 and one, it's going to be a tough out because Ryan Leonard's playing really well. He's healthy, running game solid right now. I want to be clear. I think Notre Dame is going to win that game. That's fine. I think Notre Dame is going to beat them pretty soundly. But just like Brad is saying, with the way that Army will pull out all the stops, they're going to go for it on fourth down. You saw the fake field goal that they had a couple weeks ago. Like, they're going to do what they can to make it just a junk ball afternoon for Notre Dame. Notre Dame better strap it up. Just a couple of 12-minute clock-draining drives for Army, right? Like, they've done that. They, yeah. They've done that this yeah. season just a couple weeks ago. Uh, they're a team that could certainly do that. I love the chaos. I'm here for the chaos. Um, look, if we've made the argument for SEC teams, for five SEC teams, how good they are. But maybe the committee has SEC fatigue. Maybe we want to get some new programs in the playoff. Maybe we want to see some new blood. Maybe that's what their criteria is because you heard Kirby Smart. It's like, I don't know what they're looking for. When they expanded this thing, it was clear they made it clear that this was about participation. It was about increasing participation uh, across college football. So let's see. I do think a 12-team rankings logic is different than a four-teams ranking logic. We'll see what happens in a couple weeks when we get to the end of this, uh, this marathon. Fun conversation. Uh, that was a really fun conversation. I love this keeps will continue throughout Selection Sunday. Brad Crawford, Richard Johnson here on CBS Sports HQ with our initial takeaways. Coming up. The biggest winners and losers. Xin chào tất cả các bạn đang xem trên kênh YouTube của mình. Video này mình sẽ hướng dẫn cho tất cả các bạn cách tô mò làm sao cho thật là đẹp nha. Nếu các bạn thấy hay, ý nghĩa để cho mình xin lượt like, lượt đăng ký kênh. Mình cảm ơn các bạn rất là nhiều. Xin chào các bạn, hôm nay mình lại tô cá mập, cá voi, con rùa, con ong, con bọ. Mình bắt đầu mình tô đây.
Xin chào các bạn, mình đã tô xong Xin chào tất cả các bạn đang xem trên kênh youtube của mình Video này mình sẽ hướng dẫn cho tất cả các bạn cách tô màu làm sao cho thật là đẹp nha Nếu các bạn thấy hay, ý nghĩa để cho mình xin lời like, để đăng ký kênh Mình cảm ơn các bạn rất là nhiều Xin chào các bạn, mình hôm nay là tô tô màu Mẹ ảnh, con rắn, người tuyết, hành tinh, trần đần Bắt đầu mình tô Chào các bạn, mình đã tôi xong nha. Xin chào tất cả các bạn.